Let's dive into Huntington's disease, a key medical surgical topic from the nervous system section that every nurse should master. Today, we'll unpack everything you need to know about managing this progressive brain disorder and tackle some practice questions. Let's get NCLEX ready! Huntington's disease is also known as Huntington's chorea, which is a progressive brain disorder. Uncontrolled movement, emotional problems, and dementia are noted in patients with Huntington's disease. Know that it is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder. What does autosomal dominal genetic disorder mean? Let's do a refresher. Someone with an autosomal dominant genetic disorder will inherit an abnormal gene from one parent. The other parent's gene could be normal, but the abnormal gene is dominant, so the child will have a 50% chance of being affected by the condition. Signs and symptoms of Huntington's disease include chorea, which is an involuntary movement that affects the arms, legs, and facial muscle. It gives the appearance that the affected patient with chorea is dancing. Chorea is not considered a life-threatening symptom, but it is the classic sign of Huntington's disease. It can affect the arms and the face more than the legs. It usually starts at unilateral, which is on one side of the body, and then can progress from there. Dementia is noted in those with Huntington's disease. It starts out mild and then becomes more severe and affects the personality. Memory loss, poor impulse control, depression, mania, and personality changes are cognitive and psychiatric issues that are noted over time. Signs and symptoms appear in the mid-30s to mid-40s. The onset may occur earlier or later in life. Speech and swallowing difficulties may be seen later on in time. Juvenile Huntington's disease is when the onset of Huntington's disease begins before the age of 20. The first signs usually are behavior changes, epilepsy, and learning difficulties. The average life expectancy for juvenile Huntington's disease is 10 to 15 years after diagnosis. This information is provided by lurychildrens.org. Causes of Huntington's disease is due to the excess repeats of CAG, which is short for cytosine, adenine, guanine. The cerebral cortex is where the brain learns and stores different mortar patterns. Basal ganglia is responsible for mortar control behaviors and emotion, and these are switched off by the indirect pathway. This prevents unwanted muscle contraction from competing with voluntary movements. To initiate unwanted movement, the mortar cortex sends a signal to the basal ganglia to activate the specific mortar pattern through the direct pathway. So keep in mind that the direct pathway initiates movement. With Huntington's disease, neurons in the indirect pathway are affected and decayed. The ability to switch off the mortar pattern is damaged, so uncontrollable movement occurs. Understanding this will help you remember what Huntington's disease is and how it occurs. Diagnostic tests. Someone with signs and symptoms of Huntington's disease and a family member diagnosed with this genetic disorder will have a very high chance of having it. Genetic testing for the CAG repeats is done for confirmation. PET scans can be performed to detect the disease. CT scan and MRI can be performed to look for brain atrophy, which would also confirm Huntington's disease. Treatment Do not be fooled on your exam when you see a choice for curing Huntington's disease because there is no cure. However, Huntington's disease is treated by managing the symptom and providing emotional support for the patient and family. Tetrabenazine also known as senosine, is commonly used to treat the chorea. Antipsychotic and antidepressants may also be prescribed for symptom management. Remember that treatment will not slow down mental deterioration. Nursing management. Support the patient's activity of daily living with hygiene, bowel and bladder care, and nutrition. Assess and evaluate the patient's mobility and functional abilities. Nursing intervention must be done to assist the patient with daily living while maintaining the patient's independence. Plan of care must be created to maintain the patient's safety and keep the patient free from injuries. 
Examples include ensuring the wheelchair is locked in place or having handrails in the shower. Observe for potential depression or suicidal ideation. Being diagnosed with Huntington's disease is overwhelming and challenging. Make sure that the patient and family are being heard. Be alert for signs and symptoms of suicidal ideation and ensure that the environment is free of potential tools for self-harm. Nursing Consideration Educate the patient and family on the genetic disorder and provide additional time to answer questions. Due to the patient's mental deterioration, the patient will require time to process information. If the patient wants to start a family, then encourage genetic counseling and educate that the offspring will have a 50% chance of inheriting Huntington's disease. Refer the patient and family to resources such as organization or group for Huntington's disease or counseling. Okay, that was a breakdown of what you should know about the nervous system disorder Huntington's disease. Before we test what we've learned so far, a quick reminder to grab your 160 free digital flashcards at cutienurses.com slash start. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like us to make more, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's apply what you just learned to 10 Huntington disease questions. Question 1. The nurse is reviewing the dietary recommendation for a 44 years old patient in the late stage of Huntington disease. Which of the following foods should the nurse question? A. Walnuts B. Ice cream C. Soup or D. Mashed potato And the correct answer is A. Walnuts Rationale Those with Huntington's disease should eat small frequent meals that are soft and easy to chew. The patient is in the late stage of Huntington's disease, so the ability to swallow may be affected. Maintaining patient safety is done by preventing potential patient harm, such as choking hazard. Walnuts are hard and may be difficult to chew, which should not be given to someone with Huntington's disease. Question 2. What type of genetic disorder is Huntington's disease? A. Autosomal recessive disorder B. Autosomal dominant disorder C. X-linked dominant or D. X-linked recessive and the correct answer is B, autosomal dominant disorder. Rationale, Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder. An example of autosomal recessive disorder is cystic fibrosis. Fragile X syndrome is an example of X-linked dominant disorder. Hemophilia is an example of X-linked recessive disorder. Question three. The nurse is providing education to a 35-year-old female patient with a family history of Huntington's disease. Which of the following statements indicates that further education is required? A. I should consider genetic testing. B. I am a carrier for Huntington's disease, so I should look into IVF option. C. My husband does not have Huntington's disease, so my child should be fine. D. I can still have children. And the correct answer is C. My husband does not have Huntington's disease, so my child should be fine. Rationale. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder. The offspring will inherit an abnormal gene from one parent. The other parent's gene could be normal, but the abnormal gene is dominant, so the child will have a 50% chance of being affected by the condition. Genetic testing should be considered. The patient can look at IVF options, which can play a role in screening embryos for Huntington's disease and transferring embryos that do not. Those with Huntington's disease can still have children, but should be encouraged for further education and be given emotional support. Question 4. The nurse is providing education for a 45 years old patient newly diagnosed with Huntington's disease. Which of the following statements indicate that the patient requires further education? A. There is a cure for Huntington's disease. B. I will inform the staff if I am getting suicidal ideations. C. I should tell my daughter to get genetic testing for Huntington's disease. Or D. There is no cure for Huntington's disease. And the correct answer is A. There is a cure for Huntington's disease. Rationale. Unfortunately, there is no cure for Huntington's disease. The other statements are correct. Suicidal ideation should be reported. Genetic testing for family members should be encouraged. 
Question five. Nursing student Logan is studying about nervous system disorders and is learning about Huntington's disease. Which of the age group does Huntington's disease usually first appear? A. Childhood. B. Teens. C. Twenties and thirties. Or D. Thirties and forties. And the correct answer is D. Thirties and forties. Rationale: Huntington's disease usually first appear in the thirties and forties. Juvenile Huntington's disease is when the onset of Huntington's disease begins before the age of twenty. Awesome job on completing these five questions. Now let's see if you can determine whether these five following statements are true or false. Question six: Huntington's disease is a hereditary disease. This statement is true. Question seven. Patient safety should be prioritized by keeping the patient free from injury. This statement is true. Question eight: Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant genetic disease. This statement is true again. Question nine: There is a cure for Huntington's disease. This statement is false. Question ten. Children of someone with Huntington's disease have a 25% chance of inheriting the disease. This statement is false. Children of someone with Huntington's disease have a 50% chance of inheriting the disease. Awesome job on completing the questions for Huntington's disease. Make sure you check out my next video where we dive into more essential nursing school hacks that you need for the NCLEX. Remember to hit that red subscribe button to keep supporting our channel. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.